Hi guys, Darren at Protopilot here. So in this first of three videos, we're gonna be taking a look at how to build the Facebook Stories feature. So let me just run you through the finished prototype here and I can talk you through it. Okay, so, so the first part we're gonna do is gonna build the, the first story, which is gonna be split into three images. So you can see we've got this progress bar counting up across the top of the screen. Each time it hits one of those breaks in the line, it's going to load another image. And then as it gets to the end of this story, we're gonna do the 3D flip, the 3D rotate there into the next story. But I can also interact with this. So if I want to come back to the first story, I can drag that back. So we're gonna make this interactive. And you can see when I drag that back, it's gonna restart this story here. And if I want to go on to the next story, I can also just go back to that story. That's gonna reinitiate that progress bar there. And you can see between this, we're restarting each story as we interact with it. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be building this time around. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's get started and build this feature. Okay, so before we get started building the interactions, I just wanna talk through the structure of the, the graphics here. So over here in the layers panel, we've got a carousel container. So that's basically a carousel for the two, the two stories. And within the carousel container, we've got story one, a container for story one, and a container for story two, okay? So let me just open up the story one container. And we've got this stories header here, so that's got a oh, while wow, header graphics in it. And I wanna pay, I want you to pay particular attention to the progress container here. So we've got this one container, so it's got a progress fill. So this is just basically one big rectangle, okay? This, this is not three separate progress bars, we're gonna be making this as a single progress bar. But I've just got a, a mask applied to this. So this mask is just a graphic that I've created in Figma and I've just basically used the union feature in Figma just to create these three separate, separate rectangles and then made it unified into one graphic. And that's what I'm using to, to mask this container, make it look like it's three, it's three separate sections. Okay, and you can just do that here. If you just see, I've got the mask here. If you just right click, you can see I've got user's mask um, just chosen here in the, in the fly out menu. Okay, so just wanted to talk a little bit about that. And then everything else, I've got my media. I've got like, three images here. So these are the three um, images we're gonna be using for our three images in this first story as well. Okay, so that's probably all we need to talk about as far as the structure is concerned. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make this carousel container, which is just a regular container right now. We wanna make it into a proper carousel inside of Protopy. Okay, so I'm gonna select this carousel container here and I'm gonna come over to the properties panel here and I'm just gonna choose the paging option here in the property details, okay? Okay, so now we've turned this carousel into a proper carousel container. If I just hit preview here, you can see that I can carousel between the two. If you've never done carousels before in Protopie, you just need to make sure that the bounding box of the carousel is set to the size of the screen. So not to the size of the content, which is normally the default. Okay, so you wanna make sure it's set to the size of the screen. And then it's gonna use that width to determine how, how many pages there are and how it pages through the, through the content, okay? Okay, so we've got that set up. The next thing we want to start doing is building the progress bar. So let's get on with that now. Okay, so we're gonna start building this progress bar. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a start trigger. Let's just make our triggers panel a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna add a start trigger here. And to this start trigger, I'm gonna add a scale response. And I wanna target progress fill one. So I'm just gonna search for that. Progress fill one. So that one, that's what I want. So I'm gonna choose that. And what I wanna do in this scale response, so I wanna scale this progress fill one. So that's basically the fill, which is making up the fill of this container. I wanna scale it to the same width as the, as the progress container, as the, as the progress bar effectively. And if we look at the container size here, it's 349 pixels. So that's what I'm going to scale it to. 349 pixels on the width. So I'm just gonna type the value in here. Okay, 
Now, because this is a continuous animation, we want this progress bar just animating up at a continuous rate. We need to change the easing curve here. So by default, you're gonna get an easing out cubic easing curve. We wanna change that to linear. So I'm just gonna tap on the little, the little easing curve icon here. And in this fly out menu, I'm just gonna choose linear from here. Okay, I'm just gonna close that down. And I want to make this whole progress bar's duration last 20 seconds. Okay, so that's pretty easy. I just need to change the duration in the scale response here to 20. Okay, and that should be all we need to do to create the progress bar animation. So let's preview that, see what we got. Cool, so you can see now we've got our progress bar working. It's gonna be counting up and you can see we've got that mask supply so it looks like it's counting through the different, the different images that's in the first story. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, next up, we're going to create the functionality to actually change the story images. So let's do that next. Cool, so now we're going to create the functionality to actually change the images when our progress bar goes from each of those segments. So to do that, we're gonna add a detect trigger. And within this detect trigger, we're going to, again, we're gonna target that progress fill one. So I'm just gonna type that here, search for it. And you'll, and you'll see within this detect trigger, we've got this second box. So this is basically a drop-down box which gives us access to all the properties that our progress fill container has. And any layer inside of ProPy has access to most of these properties. Sometimes you get some specific ones for, for specific kinds of layers, but there's a lot of common properties as well. And in this instance, we want the width property. So we wanna basically detect when the width of the container property is changing. And obviously it's gonna be continuously changing because it's animating up with that scale response. Okay, so choose width there. Now we've detected that the width is actually changing. We wanna do some stuff, but we wanna add a, a condition here. So we're gonna add a condition block. And again, we need to target progress fill one. You can see it's already selected that for me which is quite useful. And again, I wanna choose the width property within the condition here. And what we're looking for, we're looking for when the width of this progress bar is greater than the width of this first section. And I've already measured this. This first section is 117 pixels. So 117 pixels is at the point where it hits this first segmented line. Okay, so I'm gonna look for when the width is greater than 117. And when it is greater than 117, so when it's reached that point that it's gonna hit that second image, I'm effectively going to just change the opacity of the first image. So if we go back to the layers here, you can see within this media layer, I've got my images stacked in reverse order. So the first image is at the top, second image is in the middle, and the third image is at, at the bottom. So I just need to hide this first image to reveal the second image here. So I'm gonna add an opacity response here. And I'm gonna target that stories media one, so that first image in the stack. And I wanna make that opacity zero. And I'm gonna set the duration to zero. So I want that opacity to happen immediately. Don't want it to fade out. You could do that if you wanted to, but that's not how Facebook stories works. Okay. And now I want to do is I want to duplicate this condition block because I wanna create a similar condition for the second image. Remember, we've got three images here. So I'm just going to Command D that or Control D if you're using Windows. Duplicate that condition block. And now I just need to change a value. So now I want to change the value inside this condition to 234. So that's going to match the second line. So when it hits 234, and again, I want to change the opacity, but this time of Stories Media 2. So I just need to select the second image here. We've already got the opacity set to zero there. And that's all we need to do. Obviously, we don't need to mess with the opacity of the third image because that's the last image in the story. Okay, so let's preview that, see how whether that's working or not, fingers crossed. Okay, so we got our first progress bar. It's counting up to our first line. And then when it hits that line, it hides that first image and reveals the second image underneath. And then when we get to the second line, it hides the second image, and now we can see the third image of a very cute dog. Okay, 
Okay, so let's just close that down. Okay, so that completes this second part, which is to change the story images. Next up, we're going to do the logic, logic around detecting the story bar end so we can move on automatically to the next story. So that's coming up in the next video.